Thank you, Mr. Chairman. We have been here now for almost uh, three hours discussing this matter, and I think that indicates that members on both sides of the aisle uh, of this committee feel like it is important. Uh, one of the reasons I am on this committee is I am passionate about getting to the truth of matters. I am on this committee because I think it is important that the American people know what is going on. I think my time, rather than piling on to some of the things that have already been said, I would like to take a couple of minutes to address some of the things that have come from uh, the other side. And they say, well, why don't you wait a little bit longer? Why don't you put up? You know, folks from the other side of the aisle are real quick to say, we are a do-nothing Congress. But then when we are trying to do something, they say, no, wait, slow down. And I, I just find that to be wrong. You know, we have been working on Fast and Furious investigation for a year now. This subpoena has been in place uh, for the better part uh, of a year. And the uh, Attorney General has had every opportunity in the world to voice his objections and comply. But instead, we wait until the last hour and say, well, give us some more time, or you bring out something like executive privilege. Now, you know, it's been 30 years since I'm in law school, but my understanding and recollection from law school, and has been um, verified by some of the other folks speaking here today, executive privilege is rightfully very narrow. It's there to protect the inner debates within the White House, give people the freedom to speak freely to the President without fear of reprisal. But if we take executive privilege down to internal discussions within every government agency, we might as well pack this committee up and go home because there's nothing to be investigating. We need to be looking into what the government decision-making process is within some of these agencies so we can develop laws and policies policies to ensure that it is better. You know, I am concerned that this is being turned into a partisan issue uh, as well. And I would like to invite my colleagues on the other side of the aisle or anyone on this side of, uh, on this side of the aisle who is thinking we are not going to vote for this contempt citation to remember the righteous indignation that you felt when Agent Terry's family was up here, when we were first hearing about this uh, over a year ago. There was bipartisan uh, disgust at what was going on. But now, in order to protect, I think, a political appointee, we are circling the wagons and drawing this uh, uh, along party lines. And, and that is not right. Remember the promises that were made in this room to Terry's family that we would not rest until we got to the bottom of this. Well, we may not be resting, but we sure are taking uh, our good time about it. You also hear from the other side of the aisle, well, Ray, maybe we should be hear have hearings about strengthening and tightening gun control laws. I, I think that is a red herring and a non sequitur. Back in Corpus Christi, Texas, we just got a new police chief, Floyd Simpson. One of the first things he did when he came in, he saw an increase in traffic crime. So he, he came and started saying, all right, officers, you are going to go out and you are going to write more speeding tickets. Not a lot of people like that, but it was the right solution to the problem. He didn't go to the city council. He didn't go to the Texas legislature saying we need to increase the penalty for speeding. He enforced the laws that were on the books and solved that problem. So I think that it is a red herring there. You know, this committee has a constitutionally mandated duty to conduct oversight and uh, to inform the legislative function. Uh, we must take action in uh, response to the Justice Department's failure to cooperate in our investigation in Fast and Furious. Taxpayers who footed the bill for this operation have a right to know what went on. The families of the fallen have a right to know. And we need the deliberative letters. We need the information after this investigation started. Because if you look at the history of investigations in this government, all the way back to the Nixon administration, it's not the crime that gets you so much, it's the cover-up. The American people are willing to forgive a mistake if somebody comes up and says, yes, I made a mistake, I'm sorry, I'm not going to do it again. But when the cover-up starts, the American people do not tolerate being lied to. They do not tolerate their elected officials being